and a very warm welcome. I am Rashmi Mabian, senior correspondent at ethealthworld.com, and today we have with us Miss Meena Ganesh, who is the CEO and managing director at Portia Medical. Meena Ganesh co-founded Portia Medical in 2013, and since then it has evolved as a leading name in the home healthcare services. Thank you so much for joining in, Miss Meena. How are you doing? Great to be here, Rashmi. Thank you for having me on the show today. Really happy to have you here, ma'am. So, uh, the ongoing COVID nineteen pandemic has really boosted the trust towards many things which already existed between us. The potential of home healthcare services being one of them. Today, in this conversation with Portia Medical's Meena Ganesh, we will understand how the home healthcare space has really evolved over the years, the impact of the COVID pandemic. and the key factors of growth in this segment and much more so to begin this conversation could you tell us what have been the major changes that portia medical has witnessed during the covid pandemic when compared to the company's journey since 2013 so very good question rashmi uh, the last year and a half with um, as when once the pandemic uh, got started has seen some enormous changes in the healthcare sector as i'm mm-hmm. sure you're aware and um, specifically two three areas that we saw huge changes one is acceptance of digital as a form of of receiving care um people of all ages and uh, different um, uh, demographic profiles are now much more willing than ever to use teleconsultations and video consultations and uh, telemonitoring and all kinds of support which earlier they would have um, had um, some reservations about Hmm. the second thing which we have seen is that a lot of services for which people would have gone to a clinic or to a hospital earlier they prefer to take it at home hmm. um, not just the customers and the patients but even the hospitals and the doctors and the insurance companies hmm. feel that many of these services are better delivered at home many of these healthcare services are better delivered at home because uh, the the possibility of exposure of patients to other uh other uh, hospital based infections is much lesser so suddenly we've seen acceptance of care through digital and care at home uh, had to skyrocket during this uh, period the other thing that we also saw is that um, it's not just patients and uh, and the healthcare community but even ho- even governments and insurance and uh, corporates realizing that you need to get care in healthcare um into people's homes and into people's communities hmm. one of the things that india has sorely lacked is outside of hospital care which is what we represent hmm. and the pandemic has shown the importance of that and uh, that has now started to find its uh, uh, its presence in the general discourse about healthcare and healthcare uh, ecosystem okay so from the start of the pandemic like you said which are the services that are actually seeing an increased demand through home healthcare so in the first wave we saw a huge amount of increase in all kinds of nursing care at home when people were sick uh, and they with covid or they were sick with other things and did not want to go to a hospital then we saw increase in all kinds of nursing and medical care services at home uh, getting doctor visits at home getting Uh, ICUs and the other critical care services at home has a certain cert- certainly shot up. The other thing that we saw go up significantly, massively, is teleconsultations and telemonitoring of COVID positive patients. In the second wave, we saw a huge increase in respiratory therapy at home because, as I'm sure you were aware, in the second phase, uh, at availability of um, oxygen beds in the hospitals was severely constrained. so it was essential for people to get those services at home so we had to uh, work with patients who were fairly sick with covid uh, who needed uh, oxygen therapy at home some some of them needed probably even more critical icu kind of setup at home uh, which uh, so that they could be stabilized till a bed could be available in a hospital where they could be moved in mm-hmm. so we saw a lot of changes in that so these are some of the covid related services that saw an increase but non covid services also saw an increase for instance uh, physiotherapy physiotherapy in uh, through a com- through what we call as a hybrid mode some mm-hmm. sessions at home rest of the sessions through video uh, providing uh, support uh, in both the forms both digital and physical was something that we saw changing quite a bit so yes uh, 
Uh, overall, very interesting times. A lot of changes that we've seen in uh, how patients have interacted with us. Seeing the increase in demand, what are the challenges that you are facing in facilitating these services at home while also assuring that the patients do get the same quality of care? Yeah, so uh, obviously, uh, especially right during the peak of the second wave, uh, there was a huge shortage of nursing uh, mm-hmm. because they, the nurses are being pulled in every direction, hospitals, mm-hmm. uh, uh, COVID care centers, uh, isolation centers and hotels, uh, everywhere. I mean, you needed desperately needed COVID trained nurses. So that was something which was a huge shortfall at that time. And also for a short period of time, there was a huge demand for oxygen concentrators that were not available. Hmm. But uh, since then, uh, we have also increased our own access to capacity, both from medical equipment and nursing. So right now we are very well established and we don't see any challenge as far as providing good quality care at home. Hmm. Um, Going forward, uh, the important thing will be that you need to have a really strong process a uh, very strong technology layer uh, so, so that you can govern medically how these services are being done at home. And mm-hmm. as a leader in this space, uh, b- because we have invested a lot in both the medical and the technology capability, we have the ability to actually ma- manage the, the quality of service, manage the, 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 uh, the uh, medical aspects of the service much more strongly. Now, that that is something for, as a... A general and uh, most home healthcare companies who have um, recently come in or have not made such investments may find it challenging to ensure that uh, quality of service. Uh, but because we have over the last eight years invested in this, it really gives us an edge. Uh, we've also um, got ourselves certified to the quality QAI standards, uh, which are specifically meant for the home healthcare industry. And that ensures that, and we are certified for multiple cities uh, or multiple service centers across the country. So what that does is that it ensures that both from a process technology, medical perspective, a certain set of um, guidelines are being followed so that patients are getting the good quality of care that they deserve. Seeing the demand, do you think the belief has also changed that the home health care is only for the people or only an option to those who can actually afford it? So while... Uh, from a private home healthcare perspective, all of us, and certainly Portia Medical, um, targets at the middle of the pyramid. So it's not that we are offering only premium services, only for those who can afford really large um, mm. amounts of money. It is meant for the middle middle class and for anybody who needs the service for, um, uh, you know, irrespective of their income levels. That said, unfortunately, it is not fully covered by insurance. And that can make a huge difference. We, we really need insurance coverage to come in at a, in a big way so that we are able to uh, ensure that anybody and everybody who requires and deserves home care uh, gets it. Now, why is this important? Uh, home care is not something which is just a convenience factor. Home care is one of the core um, uh, parts of the whole uh, of the entire healthcare industry, which ensures that patients get a continuous care if they have a chronic disease or if they have diseases like um, cancer, etc., where they need continuous care, they get that. Secondly, um, elders and others who are homebound are still able to access health care and they are able to get reimbursed for that without having to step into a hospital and potentially expose themselves to other dangers. And of course, care at home sometimes can be cheaper than care at a hospital. So overall, for the healthcare ecosystem, it is indeed better if we encourage home care and encourage insurance to cover home care as well. So being the leader in the home healthcare space, could you also share us some of the key learnings over these eight years? So the first few years, um, uh, being Okay. The advantage and disadvantage of being a leader is that you have to establish uh, credibility for the entire industry. So the first few years, we, uh, we spent a lot of time in ensuring people understood. And when I say people, it's not only the end consumers, but the healthcare ecosystem understands what home healthcare is and why it is important and why it can actually add value. So there's a lot of effort that had to go in during those initial periods. Mm-hmm. Of course, today, it's no longer something which we need to uh, uh, help people understand why. Now it's about how do you make sure it is of a, a superior quality, supported by technology, with all the uh, 
uh, point of care devices how do you keep changing along with the time and give people what they really uh, are looking for and deserving uh, so the, the transformation of the home healthcare industry from some from a um, uh, you know bureau run uh, kind of a, a setting where some nurses used to get together and provide home care from that we i have seen the transformation and i think i would like to say that i have probably led the transformation of the industry over the years into something which is now very legitimate seen as a critical part of the healthcare ecosystem not just by the patients but by regulators by government by by the entire uh, provider um, system because this is what helps get uh, the patients get a complete end to end care that is required for both recovery rehabilitation uh, and helping elders live a life of uh, dignity especially uh, towards their sunset years where uh, they are probably suffering from multiple comorbidities they still deserve to live a good life as good a life as they they can be provided and mm-hmm. for for all of these purposes home care is um, a very critical part of the industry that's that's my learning and that now combined with digital uh, acceptance at various levels um gives an opportunity for all of us to really deliver good quality care across mm. the country so do you also see a mind mindset uh, changing among doctors to believe in home health care as a good career option absolutely uh, that was the other challenge good you brought that up the first many years was about helping doctors nurses physiotherapists uh, uh, phlebotomists all of them agree that a hospital is not the only place where you can be employed you mm-hmm. could work with a home healthcare company and this is a great quality of um, a career that you can develop here as well so uh, explaining and showing them uh, it did uh, it was a challenge but now it's seen as one of the uh, top employers certainly because of the growth and uh, the, the pace of growth that this industry is able to offer So ma'am what are the factors to sustain this growth for the home healthcare segment in India I think the the, the beauty is that this is um, this early days for this industry it's still <laughs> developing so we have a long long way to go uh, it's about how best you can uh, combine technology and serv- service on the ground and uh, provide the right care at the right place some people need care digitally some people need care near home some people care need care at home and then some people need care in a in a facility how do you put all of these together to ensure that the right care is being provided once once that is clear to people um it's really sky is the limit and also we have to find models which work in smaller towns and smaller cities um and which are economically viable for the home health care companies as well as for the customers that's where insurance if it comes in and supports this can help grow uh, help this industry grow quite rapidly thank you so much ms meena for sharing such great insights and your vision on how the growth of home health care is placed in india it was lovely speaking to you very nice to speak with you also rashmi thank you